I want to start us out with a poem, uh, which like many expressions of art, can draw us deep into hard topics like grief. I'm gonna screen share a poem called The Thing Is by Helen, Ellen, excuse me, Bass. The thing is to love life, to love it even when you have no stomach for it, and everything you've held dear crumbles like burnt paper in your hands, your throat filled with the silt of it. When grief sits with you, its tropical heat thickening the air, heavy as water, more fit for gills than lungs. When grief weights you down like your own flesh, only more of it, an obesity of grief, you think, how can a body withstand this? Then you hold life like a face between your palms, a plain face, no charming smile, no violet eyes. And you say, yes, yes, I will take you. I will love you again. If you believe that love is an essential energy of life without which there is no life and no zest for life, then you also know that grief is a constant element of life. Sooner or later, everything we love will be lost to us in one way or another. Like most of us, I've learned this not only through my deeply personal losses, as in the deaths of family elders and close friends and mentors, as well as the death of personal visions, dreams, and hopes. I've also learned about grief in, in every movement for social change I've ever participated in. And it has come to me often that if I can't hold grief, I can't hold a place in trying to make this planet more fit for human habitation. For me, at age 83, looking back on 60 plus years of participation in the peace movement and the movement for black liberation in the US, there's enormous grief in seeing how many things that we thought were achievements have been brought down by setbacks. A depth of grief that leads some people to say, this is where I came in, stop the world, I wanna get off. 